Hey guys, Brian Beeler here with Storage Review, and today we come to you with a bit of a heavy heart. Normally we're unboxing things, today we have to box something. So we're actually gonna give you a little uh, video walkthrough of this Lenovo SR950. Now we've had this one for a while and it came in before we were doing a lot of these videos, but on the way out the door, we wanna give you a video because the platform is one of the most powerful servers we've ever seen, and we haven't even fully spec'd this thing out yet. It can support eight of the Cascade Lake, that's the Xeon second gen scalable CPUs. We only used four. And to be fair, we did at least use 8280M, so we got good CPUs in there, but there was even more room in there. Uh, we've got a bunch of NVMe drives in here. Uh, you can see actually we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And these are the, the Intel P4610s, if I remember. So pretty good drive. We've got them split up here uh, because this system actually can be configured in a number of different ways. So let me just tell you a little bit about that. On the bottom, we've got a compute node. On the top, we just have a storage node. Now, if you were going to use all eight CPUs, you would have two of the same thing. You'd have two storage nodes, or I'm sorry, two server nodes. And the other thing is that half the bays are NVMe and half are SATA SAS. So that's why we've got the drives populated up here on this uh, chassis and then down here on this chassis. So they're a little bit split up uh, in this particular configuration. Let me go ahead and pull this off so we can get another look at the, uh, the rest of the insides. So each one of these can be released on the side and completely ejected from the system. We'll do that in just a second to show you what's inside. Uh, the other thing, and this is one of Kevin's favorite things, he loves modularity and he loves fans. He's big into airflow. So one of the neat things is if you lift and pull out, the whole fan unit just slides right out of the unit. And it's not like they're in there flat, they drop down when they go inside. So they slide out flat and then flop down. It's really cool. Yeah, I guess it's literally cool. Uh, just a neat engineering thing that Lenovo did with this system. If you're gonna put a system together that can support eight CPUs, you better be able to power it and cool it. So we can cool it, and on the back we have uh, four power supplies so they can power it as well. What we're gonna do then is go ahead and pull out both of these. We're gonna pull out the back plane too, or the, uh, the back component, put them all on the table one at a time and walk you through all of those individual components just to give you a better idea of how neat this system is. Uh, oh, before we do that one thing I forgot, this little guy. This little dude pulls out, it's got system information on it, a little uh, readout display up and down and, and checkbox uh, to, to navigate through uh, errors and system information. This is my favorite thing and I almost forgot to tell you about it. So that's cool, that slides back in. Now we'll take these pieces out and do a deeper dive on all three of those components. So I went ahead and pulled out the server module, and as you could see before with the fans, how they droop down, if I were to slide it back in, you can watch, Whee! almost like a roller coaster hill. It's just really neat. Underneath are all of our drives, and there's cabling uh, for the NVMe drives that uh, you can't quite see from the video, but trust me, it's there. Now, we take a look at these boards. This is really short. This is about a little longer than a banana. And that has two of our CPUs and all of these DIMM slots. In our testing, we had six DIMMs per CPU. We had a total RAM footprint of uh, 768 gigabytes. So we were able to drive a tremendous amount of uh, performance from the RAM, from the CPUs, from the storage. What that means is we topped 5 million IOPS on, uh, on 4K read and on sequential, we were at over 32 gigabytes per second, if I recall. Now, the curious eye will spot some of these DIMMs that look a little bit different than the others. These are all of our Intel uh, DC, Optane DC persistent memory modules. The platform was fully populated with them. In our review of this platform, we didn't use those, but in some upcoming work we'll have out uh, around Formulas Black, you may see some performance numbers there that are, that are pretty interesting. So we've used this system a couple different ways, not just in the core review. Now on the back, you can see all the connectivity that'll plug in 
to the, uh, to the rest of the system to get access to all the PCIe slots. And if you notice really well, hopefully it shows up in the video, there's a second board underneath. So what we're dealing with is a uh, British double-decker red bus kind of scenario where if we release these tabs, yank this, then you would see the other board underneath. Again, really great compactness, really great engineering as Lenovo is wont to do, and plenty of cooling from the fans across the front to keep all this stuff humming along. So let me go ahead and put this back. We'll yank out the storage shelf just to show you what that looks like and keep cruising. Went ahead and pulled the top unit from this system. This is a simple storage expansion shelf. So in our case, in order to get access to more NVMe drives, again, we're using the, uh, the Intel product there, we had to get the storage shelf. This can ship blank without this unit. It can ship with this storage shelf or, as uh, noted before, with another compute shelf that'll get you up to four more of those Intel Cascade Lake CPUs more persistent memory, more DRAM, whatever you need. In total, this box has got crazy capabilities. So not a whole lot to see here. It does have fan components in the front, more wiring for the NVMe drives, and then you know basically just plugs into the back plane and, and off, off she goes. Not a lot here, but just from a design standpoint, wanted to share that and uh, give you guys a look at what this particular component looks like. Now let's grab the, uh, the thing out the back and we'll take a look at the rest of the expansion capabilities. So we pulled out the uh, PCI backplane here. There are two risers and we started with this angle because here's just one of my other favorite things aside from the little glowy display. It's just, look at this mechanism. I could sit here, I could just sit here and crank this and watch the gears work all day long. Kind of wish I had some tiny oranges to make orange juice with it with or, or something, but uh, uh, it's just neat. All right, I'll quit messing around. So as we spin around to this side, then we can see uh, the rest of the, the parts inside. We've got a M.2 unit here for boot, which is great. There are nine total expansion slots. I won't detail them all, just know that there are many. And uh, we also have an onboard NIC here. Uh, overall, again, it just slots in, exposes itself to the compute, and it's uh, off and running. The expansion slots would give you plenty of room for additional NICs. We have a, a couple slots open here that we used with um, 100 gig NICs or whatever Kevin found at the time for it. And um, otherwise, you could put GPUs, FPGAs, whatever you want in this thing. So in total, Amazing performance, R5 million IOPS, 32 gigabytes per second performance was great, and that was just the four CPUs. Think about what you could do if you filled this thing all the way to the brim. So Lenovo, uh, with, as expected, another really great server. We're a little sad to see it go, but uh, hopefully we'll replace it with something else great soon. Thanks for tuning in.